Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Holy shit. Man, I knew what it was going to say, but that is one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it. It's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck. Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years. What the hell? What the hell? What are you talking about? It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments. What in God's name are you talking about? You aren't making any sense. I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have the time to explain it right now. I promise I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... Automatic incineration will take place in... 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn. What kind of an idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well... God damn it. Okay, okay. Fine. I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing. How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait. The floor. It's moving. What else can I say about it, but... What the hell is that? What else could I say, but... What is that? The floor opened and a machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. At least, it kind of did. There was a monitor, a keyboard, and a cross-shaped device of some kind. Something about the machine scared me, but I forced myself to walk up to it. I was terrified. Tears poured down my face. I wiped them off, even as more took their place, and forced myself forward. Finally, I reached it. I looked at the screen. It was blank. All I saw was my own frightened face staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. All I can see on this screen is a reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei, just calm down, all right? Everything's going to be okay. Man, I wish that thing would just shut up. Automatic incineration will take place in... 15 minutes. All right, back to this thing. If it's only showing up now, then it's got to be important. But what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Hmm. Hey, move. Hey, we're all tense, lady. That doesn't mean you get to shove people around. Okay, it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. This is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure, just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... It worked. Huh. Well, at least it's on now. What's on the screen, though? What is this? What the hell? It looks like some sort of puzzle. Oh, fucking course. It's got a bunch of numbers scattered across a 9x9 nine nine grid. The numbers range from 1 to 9. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? Yeah, well, we can hope, right? Alright, puzzle, how do you work? 
Oh man, that goddamn voice again. Automatic incineration will take place in 13 minutes. Shit, 13 minutes. Can we really do this? My heart feels like it's gonna pop. I'm gonna play Sudoku. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I stared at this puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but I had no idea how. My connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any more information from him. I felt the seconds tick by as I stared at the screen completely lost. My cheeks felt hot as tears poured over them. Then I heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Pressed against the window in the entry door was a face. A frightening, evil face. It was Hongo. How long had he been watching me? Oh, don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, really. But I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> His laughter was muffled by the door, but it still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bit my lip and glared at Hongo, struggling to hold back hot tears. You're a terrible person! I hate you! Oh my! How could you call gentlemen such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see, I've even left you a way out. A, a way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you I'm a fair man. If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will in turn activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. The verification function of the red? Then I remembered. Before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets into the red. Ah, uh, so you do remember. Right now, there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? I looked down at my left hand. The face in my bracelet showed a five. One plus three plus five equals nine. I ran to the door with the nine on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I hear Hongo's muffled voice from across the room. I already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of a fool are you? Why... why are you doing this? <laughs> you could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. Now, start the experiment. Solve the puzzle. I can't. I don't know how. Of course you don't. Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution. I can't. Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. <laughs> it's going to be quite hot in there in a few minutes. I imagine it will be very painful. <laughs> His horrible laugh echoed across the room, and even after his face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Automatic incineration will take place in... 10 minutes. 
I was crying, great gulping sobs broken by hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous weight. Somehow, I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the empty monitor. I can't. I just can't. There's no... no way. I can't figure this out. What was I going to do? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't even know where to start. Fear scattered my thoughts, and all I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating, and my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot, so hot. I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. My heart roared in my chest, as if it would pound itself to pieces. I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my hand around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Chumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Help me, Jumpy. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, Jumpy, you're my only hope. Jumpy! 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 Please, help me! Jumpy! Akane! Akane? Who the hell is Akane? Shut up. Just shut the hell up. Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea, though. Clover's looking at me. And I think Snake may have figured it out. No, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here. Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Fuck! Did something break her connection? I swear I just heard her. Shit! Akane, answer me! Akane! Jumpy? I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course. But I'd heard it so clearly, like he was right there. Chumpy! I screamed as loud as I could. Immediately, I heard him call back. Akane! Chumpy! That's her! She's there! Then, that means... Akane, are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am! How, how did you know? Now I understand what Santa meant. Right, there's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister, to save Akane. I think I get it now. Automatic incineration will take place in... 7 minutes. Jumpy, we don't have time! As quickly as I could, I told him that I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it. And I do. I get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all of this means. I know why the nunnery game was held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It was all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god. This is, this is insane. I, I can't believe it, but there's only one possible answer. June is... Zero is... Akane Kurashiki. She recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan. I will save her. I will save... Akane Kurashiki. I must save her, no matter what.
automatic incineration will take place in six minutes. Jumpy! Yeah, I know. Just hang on, all right? I promise I'll get you out of there. I'm not going to let you die. I promise. So don't worry, all right? Just give me a few minutes. Okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes or not, my heart burned with my feelings for him. All right, time to get to work, Junpei. Is Snake talking to them about something? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Get out of my way. Hey, what are you... Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus. I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more at stake here than your pride. I'll apologize later, alright? Now, let's have a look at this thing. We've got numbers all over this grid. Alright, bring it on! I'll save her, just watch me! That's it! Akai, did you get it? Yes, I did! I solved it! Well, I mean, really, you solved it for me, but... I copied everything you did! Now I just have to press enter! Then what the hell are you waiting for? Push it! Okay, I will. I hit the enter key. Emergency shutdown command has been acknowledged. Incineration system has been shut down. Jumpy! What's wrong? It worked! It worked! The incinerator shut down! It worked! Tears rolled down my face as I cried out to him, but they were a very different sort of tears. A wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength it had left disappeared and I collapsed to the floor. For a while, I just lay there, laughing and crying, and enjoying being alive. Every time I thought about him, I thought my heart would burst. <sighs> Can't quite believe I did that. But I am so glad. So glad. I, I feel like my heart's on fire. No, I don't have time to be thinking about that kind of shit. I need to tell Akane. Akane, sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm going to have to hang up now, okay? Like they're on the phone. Oh, of course, that's fine. I wiped the tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. Then I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were the two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now, well, Seven and Lotus don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to give someone who just saved your lives, guys. Be more grateful. Junpei, are you? Okay. Ah, oh, shut it. Right, okay, so maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I haven't pressed the enter key yet? All right, nothing holding me back now. Here goes. Wait. Automatic incineration will take place in 90 seconds. It doesn't sound like it's stopping. What the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again. And again. And again! Okay, that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the hell is going on? I've got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. So why the fuck isn't this thing stopping? Automatic incineration will take place in 60 seconds. Wait, of course. 
Junpei's head snapped up to stare at the nine door. Had he been wrong? What if the thing written on the door wasn't a nine at all? It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a cue. Holy shit, of course. Then we just have to put the right number into the red and... Automatic incineration will take place in... 30 seconds. Run, guys. Get to the door. Run. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Don't have much time. Man, I sure hope they can just trust me on this one or we are all fucked. Alright, no time to explain. Just go. Quick, verify your numbers on the red. Verify? Who? What combination? All of us, we all need to verify. Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it! Automatic incineration will take place in... 10 seconds. 9... 8... 7... Hurry, 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 hurry... 6... Five, four, three, two, Central Gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Thank fucking Christ. No. No time to be happy. Time to go. Hurry, we've only got nine seconds before the door closes. Go, go, go. Come on, guys, move it. Okay, they're all through. Move it, Junpei. Just in time. And there goes the door. No, don't calm down yet. You're not done. We've still got to find the dead. Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> Man, that guy sure can laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are totally out of energy. I guess Snake probably can't see the sky, but he sure can feel the fresh air. I just want to take a nap. Akane! Akane! Akane, can you hear me? I want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel. Nothing. The door opened. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane. Ali. I cried his name, even though my voice was almost gone from screaming and leaped into his arms. Oh, Howie. Akane. I buried my face in his chest and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. Its beat was almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I hadn't felt the warmth of another human body in what had seemed like an eternity. I just wanted to stay there in his arms forever. But I couldn't. The moment I'd passed through the door, my bracelets had begun the countdown to death. I leaped away from him and looked around. 
The door had already closed. I spotted the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to and scan all the bracelets. I left the ones Hongo had dropped on the scanner panel. That was it. <sighs> I took a deep breath and looked around again. The huge detective who we'd call Seven in Nine Years and Snake, the blind boy, were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide and their mouths hung open. Alright, let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Ahui was right. It was time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise, and they nodded. We took off running up the spiraling stairs to freedom. But if they can get us out of here, no wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating so hard I can barely hear. God, I can't wait to breathe real air again. Huh, is Seven talking? Hey Junpei, can I ask you something? What's up? That door, the one with a nine on it, why did it open? Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 is 26. That makes our digital root 8. It shouldn't have opened. That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? Because you were the one you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base 2? 0 and 1. How about base 10? That goes from 0 to 9, right? Then how about base 16? 0 to F. After 9, it starts at A and goes from there. B, C, D, etc. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12. D is 13, and so on. So, what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go way past base 16, all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16, H is 17, I is 18, J is 19, K is 20, L is 21, M is 22, N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and what comes after that? Q! 26! When you add up all the numbers on our bracelets, what do you get? 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 equals 26! And what does that mean? That wasn't a 9 on the door! It was a Q! A fucking lowercase Q! Yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way, you could say that it was a 9 in base 10 but a Q in base 27. God, my thighs are killing me. I swear, any moment now I'm gonna tear a muscle. I feel like every single cell of my body is dying for air. Damn, every breath I take is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Maybe just a short rest. No, can't stop, don't have time. Come on, legs, there can't be many more of these steps left. Run! Run! Like a bullet down a rifled barrel. A tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant coiled dragon. Finally.
Jesus, I can barely breathe. No, Jinpei, no time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost there. All right, I'm going to open it. Yeah. Yes. We're finally here. Please do. Sure, you look like a big, heavy door. But you're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Akane. You're gonna open, and you're gonna open now. I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Aoi's. He gave it a small, reassuring squeeze. I was so happy I felt like I could melt. My heart was at peace. And not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective, all nine of us who had been kidnapped. were finally able to escape from the gigantic. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank. It gave a thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. Its last cry echoed out across the ocean, and then it was gone. It's over, Ali whispered. Yeah. It was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Was it really? No, that was wrong. That wasn't it at all. I was sure of it. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. This was only a prologue to what would happen in nine years. Yes, finally. Air. <sighs> Damn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. Huh, I gotta admit... This doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way. You have got to be shitting me. What? It can't be. This is... This is the building in the Nevada desert. The mock experiment building. Oh my god. This whole time, we were in building Q. Sure enough, that's a desert out there with mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. I don't think I have ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? Right, our bracelets. I guess I've never really got a good look at the underside of one of these. Let's see what's inside you. Just a little electronic chip, like in an ATM card. That's it. There's nothing else. Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Figures. Akane. Jumpy. <laughs> Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. Okay. So I'm sorry if you're seeing a vertical image. It's because of the way that my uh, screen was set up. <sighs> I wonder how they managed to get them all across the border. Because they're all Japanese. <laughs> But anyway, uh, that was a really nice little video novel there. I'm sure um, you can actually play a puzzle-oriented game on the 3DS. Uh, not the th well, you can play it on the 3DS, but it's a DS game. Sorry, I'm so used to saying 3DS now, the now these days. And something I didn't, I failed to mention, but in Japan, um, four and nine are considered unlucky numbers. And I think most people know that four in Japanese sounds like the word death. She. But nine sounds like suffering. Q is nine. Ku is suffering. So it sounds similar to that. Okay. Are you okay? Oh, come on. This is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. It was just before the end of elementary school. 
It, oh, sorry. It was just before the end of elementary school. Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill, looking down at the town as the sun slowly set. How does it look then? He was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute first. Um, well, let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> what does that even mean? Junpei grinned and... Ow, 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 ow. See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. Look at the Nevada desert go past. For an SUV, this thing has a pretty smooth ride. Sure was nice of someone to leave it for us outside the building. Keys in the ignition and gas in the tank. Almost like it was a present, you know? Anyway, we jumped in, and now here we are, screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven and I are all squeezed into the back seat here. I still can't believe we let her drive. <laughs> this is so fun! This is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around. And there's no speed limit! Hey, Clover, watch those bumps, alright? This car jumps even a little. I think I'm gonna get crushed to death. Hey, shut it. I can't help it if I'm big, alright? Suck it up. Why don't you drive, Seven? I'm a cop. I ain't gonna break the law. He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. There's no way I'm giving this seat up. And Clover, there's no need to slow down. The car Santa and Six are in should be somewhere. Down this road ahead of us. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no doubt about it. And then we've got to hurry if we want to catch them, don't we? Sure thing! Ah, oh, shit! God damn it, she doesn't have to drive so fast. Man, I didn't even think a cart like this could go this fast. We're sure throwing up a lot of dust. It was a couple hours after we'd run into the junior high students. They'd been hiding in the bushes on the back of one of the hills, drenching a kitten in gasoline. The moment we saw what they were doing, Jumpy ran up to them, furious. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Then he jumped on them. He quickly scooped up the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Help me! Officer, please! You have to come with me! The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Jumpy, sprawled on the ground with a face covered in big swelling lumps. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me? I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth had been fallen out. Yeah, I guess I coulda. Then why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty? Yeah, that too, but I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester, remember? Oh, you mean the bunnies? Yeah, the bunnies. He plucked some grass, grass from the ground and tossed it into the wind. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told him. Then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbit. I couldn't forgive him for that. So, I... Hey, there's still some stuff I don't get. Of course, they probably don't know any more than I do. Like Ace. Well, I guess I should say Gentaro Hongo. Why did he create the Nonary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? Why don't you ask him yourself? Well, yeah, I guess I could. He's still in the trunk, I assume. Yeah, he is. Still tied up, I'm assuming, with his mouth taped shut. Well, might as well have a little chat with the old man. His eyes just look empty. No emotion. He looks like he's just given up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him anymore. Hey, were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you weren't, you old bastard. 
Let's get that tape off your mouth. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. You could at least look at me when you talk, man. I... I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought... I thought that if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces. By peering into people's minds, you could understand how they were processing the expression of, of others. That's it? Yes, if you want to put it simply. But if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, I can supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness... I think that's enough out of you, pal. Time for the tape to go back on. Alright, so what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, somebody's a little nosy. Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well, see, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own, hoping I'd catch him when he finally slipped up. During the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Gordain and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? <coughs> Sounds like Hongo was, has something to say. Alright, fine, I'll let you talk, but you gotta behave. What? Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Mandragora, of the family Solan Solanaceae. I, I don't know. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. I used that extract to create soporil. Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Shit, this is gonna go on forever. Tape's going back on, Hongo. The rest of my questions can wait a bit. For now, I think I'll just enjoy the ride. Here, this is for you. What is this? This is a for you doll. His name is J Junpei. Jumpy pulled something out of his pocket and shoved out his arm toward me. In his hand was a doll made of yarn, small enough to fit in his palm. Jumpy, are you sure it's a, uh, for you doll? Uh-huh, yeah, the lady at the shop said so. Th that, th that it me means it's for you, right? I am... Um... Are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? Hoodoo. Hoodoo. Um, I'm trying to imagine how they would say voodoo in Japanese. It would be like... Hoodoo or something like that. I don't know. Kid wasn't paying attention. What? That's... Oh man, oh man! <laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? Yeah, I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea, then. Why are you giving me this, anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well, um, you know how after June, we aren't gonna get to see each other too much? I mean, we're gonna be in different schools, and... Oh, okay. Well, uh, how about we call it June then? O okay. So I wanted to give this you. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. Yes, I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I give this, it me, so we always together. Oh, Jumpy. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. I reached my hand out and picked up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. 
Tears streamed down my face and fell onto June's tiny yarn body. Oh, Jumpy, I'll never forget you. I promise. Jumpy looked straight into my eyes and said just five words. I'll never forget you either. The sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down toward the horizon. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat, bathed in the warm light of evening, just the two of us leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set and we still didn't leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened, and one by one, the lights of the town began to flicker on. There's still one thing I don't get. To be honest, it's the biggest mystery as far as I'm concerned, and also the only one that's really important. It has to do with June and Akane. Nine years ago, she died in the incinerator on the Gigantic. But she's still alive now as June. But how? Was it because I tapped into the morphic field set and saved her nine years ago? Hmm. All right, let's say that makes some kind of insane sense. If I did that, then how do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake makes sense. He's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. He was right there with the cheers and everything. But Seven, he said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of historical discrepancy? Or wait, maybe that's not it at all. There is one other logical explanation. Before I continue, I'm going to I'm going to theorize that cuz it seems like there's some parallel worlds going on here and those are also being transferred over the field. Those memories. That's my guess. He couldn't. Hey, look! Over there! There's somebody next to the road! Okay, I'm gonna flip it because it's another one of those. I, I beat this, um, but my microphone acted weird during this part, so I'm replaying it. And that's how I know. Huh? Whoa? Hmm? The burning gaze of the Nevada sun pounded down on her head. The desert around her rippled with heat. Standing there on that shimmering plain was a woman, her arm out and her thumb up. Who was she? Junpei had to know. Alright, and that's the true ending for Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. A very nice little visual novel there, I really liked it. And I'm looking forward to playing Virtue's Last Reward. Next week, the the third one comes out. And supposedly, it's the final one. Um, but I won't be able to play that for a little while now. So, okay. Well, I will be getting the bad endings. And that will be next, as well as Virtue's Last Reward. Thanks for watching.